Okay, we now would like to move on to floating LNG installations. And I'd like to ask Rob Farmer, a SIGTO technical advisor, to please update us on this very latest publication. Rob, over to you. All right, thank you, Andrew, for the introduction. A warm welcome to all of the attendees. So I hope you and yours are staying self safe and healthy. And now a short presentation uh, on a labor of love over the past two and a half years so floating LNG installations. So the first slide here. Uh, so how did we get here? I wanted to start out with a quick history and an overview of the project. So early in 2016, discussions around the topic of floating LNG installations really became more frequent. And this led to a 2017 uh, member survey, a GPC member survey that highlighted this topic for SIGTO to address. So from that project, terms of references were created and those were approved by the GPC and Board of the Directors in early 2018. So with all of this interest, uh, we were actually provided a huge amount of industry support and contribution from our member companies, 24 in fact, and of which uh, provided actually one or more individuals in most cases Four classification societies were involved throughout this entire project. Various subject matter experts and original equipment manufacturers were involved and consulted. And as the final draft uh, took place, we actually went out for peer reviews, selected peer reviews with SIGTO members not associated with the project. And then lastly, the final master draft documents went through two cycles of the GPC for a robust comment and editing process, which is now common for all of our projects. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so this slide details the scope of the project and the publication, and that is providing guidance relating to the development and operation of floating LNG installations. So and due to the sheer size of this topic and specialized publications that are already in the public domain, we took a very pragmatic and practical approach on fixing our scope to the floating asset itself and how it interfaces with those three topics down below. So topside equipment dealing with uh, process plants, et cetera, uh, fixed marine structures, um, examples of jetties, subsea components, et cetera, and supply gas and send out uh, boundaries, which uh, incorporate battery limits. So as mentioned, we did include guidance on these interfaces, uh, and have practical information there, but these are more detailed in other uh, industry publications that we reference. So next slide, please. So now onto the actual structure of the publication. Uh, we actually broke it into two sections. The first deals with the technical assessment concept. And that includes both physical site assessment criteria and considerations, and then actually design considerations. And then the second portion or second section deals solely with operations. Next slide, please. So along with the scope and the structure of the publication, we needed to look at our target audience. So who was that? So this guidance is uh, primarily directed at project developers. And when we say project developers, that means anyone from an LNGC owner looking to add an FSRU or an FSU to their fleet profile, or potentially a large integrated oil major looking at, a, at an EPC contract for adding an LNG FPSO and associated systems. Um, additionally, within that, that project uh, developer sphere also includes all of the stakeholders uh, associated with these projects. So various port authorities, local authorities, uh, marine service providers, et cetera. So the next uh, group that could really benefit from these uh, best practices and guidance uh, are actually owners of current LNGCs uh, that have, or that will be calling to floating LNG installations. And then lastly, this should really be an excellent reference for all existing and current, currently operating floating LNG installations. So next slide, please. So to get into the little, little more of the details of the actual sections, um, in the technical assessment section, this guidance is presented chronologically over the entire asset lifecycle from really the initial scoping and ideas all the way through to D1. 
decommissioning. So and the key idea here, and that's how it's presented, is all about uh, the early gathering and assessment of data. And really the, the core here is driving the data quality up. So really, the more you know, the better decisions your, your decisions will be and uh, apply to whatever specific asset it is. So in the topics listed below are the, the major, major portions of this first section, uh, really the considerations and concepts of the floating LNG installation, that's really the project options and potentially requirements, availability, operability, et cetera. Uh, the physical site assessment criteria, uh, things such as geotechnical studies, slossing analysis, and heading studies covered there. Um, the next item with project statutory considerations. So this deals uh, with anything other local and, and national requirements and takes into consideration uh, whether the asset is potentially classed under a prescriptive guidelines or um, under a safety case regime. The next item of technology and safety considerations, uh, things such as the options for self-propelled or non-propelled cargo containment systems and interfaces with process safety equipment. And then lastly, oh, if we could go back one, please. There we go. And the last item is the project life cycle. That really is dealing with uh, assessing either the short, medium, or long-term uh, details of the project, uh, whether this is potentially an interim solution or a long-term fixed, fixed term asset. Next slide, please. All right, dealing with operations, uh, this is really the cornerstone of all of C uh, CIGTO's publications, really reinforcing safe operations within established limits. And major topics within this portion of the publication are commissioning and startup. And this really kicks off the validating of those early technical assessment decisions. Uh, operational safety, so that is Again, operating and validating those operating limits. Uh, standard operations, we go in depth to those. And also one thing real quick to mention, just unique to floating LNG installations is having a very robust cargo inventory management system and process. And then lastly, uh, the emergency response planning. So that is the integration of all the stakeholders, be it the uh, floating LNG installation, attending LNGCs, port authorities, uh, and others. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the last slide, and I just wanted to highlight some of the uh, information sharing within the GPC and HEC working groups. So uh, as luck would have it, I was also looking after the revision of the LNG shipping suggested competency standards. And that group noticed that there were no specific competencies dealing with FSUs, FSRUs. So this allowed actually both projects to collaborate and uh, contribute and improve each other's final product, especially with the creation of the additional FSRU uh, annex in the competencies publication. So thank you very much. I hope you found that interesting and I hope the industry finds the publication uh, useful for the months and years to come. Thank you. Bob, a question for you about the publication um, you, you talked about. Um, how about the jetty-less floating installation like the Connect LNG? Um, have you considered covering that in the publication? Uh, yes, there's nothing that actually precludes that in the publication. Um, we deal mostly with typical or standard type installations, but there is a small section, a small area on novel and emerging technologies that uh, those technologies should use the same robust criteria and um, basically information that we uh, that we put as guidelines. Um, Rob, the uh, publication you described in detail um, is obviously going to be available early in the new year. So for the regarding the target audience, obviously the target audience will include operators of FSRU. But who else do you think would be the target audience for this particular publication in addition to the operators? Okay. Well, really, as, as described and really the interest, uh, we're, we're new entrants to this, this portion of the industry. Uh, so really, not only the 
potentially owners and operators of the asset themselves of be it an FSRU or an LNG FPSO, but all of the associated stakeholders, whether it's going into an existing port infrastructure so uh, or marine service providers. So really anyone can benefit that's involved with um, floating LNG installations. Okay, thank you very much.